This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Tree fern fiber, is it a game changer or overhyped? Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. At the moment, everybody's talking about tree fern fiber. Now it's not a new substrate, but it's becoming more and more popular in the houseplant community. And I only recently started using it. So I thought it might be good to do a designated video on tree fern fiber so you know exactly what to look out for, but you also know the pros and cons of this substrate. A couple of months ago, Tim from Grow Vertical, one of the most knowledgeable growers I know over here in Australia, uh, told me about tree fern fiber and how he's been using it in his plant journey and told me it's an absolute game changer and I should really give it a try. So, of course I did. This is not sponsored. I'm here to give you my honest opinion about this substrate. Alrighty, let's talk about tree fern fiber in itself first and what it is before we go into the pros and cons. So tree fern fiber is basically shredded tree ferns. I have sourced the tree fern fiber from New Zealand from a brand called Fernwood and I'll link their website down below. I do believe they have uh, distributors internationally as well. So if you're in any other country that's not Australia, check out their website. If you are in Australia, uh, Grow Vertical as well as Growing Grounds both stock tree fern fiber. And a good thing about anything that comes from New Zealand is that we know that there are really strict regulations in place when it comes to harvesting practices. I actually met the guy from Fernwood um, at the plant collector fair and I had a long chat to him because my initial thoughts would be that well if you're taking down full trees and shredding them uh, how long would it take for that to regrow so how can your harvesting practices be sustainable but he ensured me that it is so basically what they do they can only harvest certain types of tree ferns so the ones that are not threatened and they can only harvest that from private properties and they can only harvest a certain amount per square kilometers in a certain time frame so that at all times they harvest less than the forest could regenerate that basically means that the harvesting practices are sustainable. They're also not destroying the actual forest um, by harvesting it. They're actually flying in via helicopter just to take out the tree ferns. That is specifically the case in New Zealand and of course with Australia being so close that is the most common place for us to source a lot of materials from but if you're anywhere else in the world please uh, keep in mind that not all countries have such strong regulations in place. New Zealand seems to always be on the forefront of that. So if you're sourcing your tree fern fiber from other countries they might have been illegally harvested and disregarding any sort of sustainable harvesting practices. So please keep that in mind when you're looking out for tree fern fiber online. The tree fern trunk is then shredded down and you end up with this tree fern fiber. So now that we know a little bit more about where it comes from and what it is, let's talk about the pros and the cons. But before we keep talking about tree fern fiber, let's hear about today's sponsor, Skillshare. You might know Skillshare for classes in photography, video editing, illustration, but did you know Skillshare also offers hundreds of career-focused classes? So all about marketing, branding, building your own business. I want to see if I can turn my passion for plants into a viable business. Now, growing plants, that's the easy part, but growing a business, that's a little bit harder, but Skillshare is here to help. This week, I took a class called Personal Lifestyle Branding, Building Your Own Story by Kate Ahrens. And in that class, she talks about being a focused brand. So let's hear what Kate has to say. First thing that they have is vision. Um, they have a very clear path as to you know, why they exist and what they're doing. Um, secondly, they have a clear purpose. Um, there's a reason why um, they believe what they believe in. They have a, a great action plan. They know exactly how they're going to get and pursue um, what they need to to make sure that their purpose is fulfilled. So I had a thought about Sydney Plant Guy as a brand and I completed this sheet that Kate provided us with as part of the class. I truly believe that plants make people happy, so that became my vision. The purpose of my brand or this YouTube channel is then really to not just educate people on how to grow plants, but also to potentially bring that joy that plants bring me to other people. Which then really leads to my three pursuits. First of all, I wanted to be realistic and transparent. Second of all, I want this to be evidence-based. Proof is in the pudding. I don't just want to talk about theory, I want to show you the results. And thirdly, I want this to be fun. Right? 
So as long as I keep that vision, purpose and the pursuits in mind whenever I create content for this channel, then I know it's going to be aligned with my focus brand. So it was a very valuable exercise to do. So thank you Kate for the great class. You can use the link in my description and the first 1000 people will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video, but now back to it. And maybe let's start off with the cons. So there's really just three main negatives about this product. First of all is the limited availability. So as I mentioned before, because we're so close to New Zealand, it's easy for us to get our hands on it. But if you're somewhere else in the world, you might have a hard time. A lot of people message me almost on a daily basis uh, saying that they have a really hard time finding even sphagnum moss. So um, I can obviously not speak for all of the countries and I don't, I don't know what materials are available in your countries, but I can't see tree fern fiber being more easily available than for example sphagnum moss. So just keep that in mind that maybe you can't even find it whereabouts you live or maybe you can't find it uh, from a company that has sustainable harvesting practices. Which kind of leads into the second negative, which is the price point. Because you can only harvest so much at any given time, the supply of tree fern fiber is quite limited. That, in combination with an increased demand from people within the houseplant community, will obviously bring up the price. So tree fern fiber, out of all of the ingredients that I use in my aeroid mixes or my moss pulse, is by far the priciest. Um, I mean, obviously that also again depends on the country that you live in, the currency that you pay, and you obviously need to put it in relation with the cost of living as well. A 40 liter bag over here retails for about 120 bucks. Take that again with a grain of salt, 120 bucks. How can I put that in context maybe? 120 bucks is basically a dinner for two at a normal restaurant, like not fine dining or something like that. So. To me, it's a no-brainer. Instead of going out on a Friday night, I'll just stay in and I'll buy a bag of tree fern fiber instead um, and maybe just cook. <laughs> but of course, you know, your money, you can do whatever you want with it, but it's definitely something to mention if you compare it to other substrates like coca chips, for example, it is definitely on the pricey side. So not everybody might be willing to put that sort of money down just for a substrate. For me personally, I actually rather get a plant that is more affordable, but then provided with the best possible conditions and care and the best possible products to really get the best out of the plant. That makes more sense than spending all my money on an expensive plant, but then not being able to realize the plant's potential because I'm not giving the plant what it potentially wants. But each to their own, your money, you can spend it on whatever you want. And the third negative is that it's quite messy. I mean, if you look at it, it is very fine, which means that within an indoor setting, it's very easy to make a mess, specifically if you use it in your poles. If you use it as a potting medium down in your actual pots, then obviously that's not so relevant. But if you start using tree fern fiber in your vertical supports, then it can get a little bit messy. From experience, I found that the initial watering is very, very messy. But then after that, it kind of like holds itself in place and it gets less and less messy. Similar to sphagnum moss, you know, when you do a, mag a moss pile for the first time, it starts shedding a little bit and then suddenly you have like little moss flakes everywhere looking like mealybugs and giving you a bit of a heart attack. But that also stops eventually. Now compared to sphagnum moss, it's definitely much messier, which makes sense. You know, sphagnum moss are these long, uh, long like strands of moss and they just kind of lock themselves into place compared to this really really fine substrate over here. So probably something I would more likely use outdoors or in a greenhouse not necessarily in an apartment setting. Alrighty and that concludes my list of cons. Now let's talk about the pros. Why do people call it a game changer or why do people start using it? Tree fern fiber basically has the perfect combination of aeration and drainage while meeting water and nutrient retention. So it's basically like sphagnum moss when it comes to water and nutrient retention, but it has the aeration and drainage of bark, for example. So it's a perfect mix or perfect combination of both. The other thing I mentioned before that it has these little fibers, and let me come a bit closer. These little fibers will actually never really interlock. So even if I squeeze it as hard as I can, it's just going to flake off again. Which really means that tree fern fiber is not really going to compact like a, 
like a colcolpid pot, for example, right? So that ensures that aeration and drainage that I spoke about earlier. And if you watched any of my videos before, I've reckoned there's probably hardly any video where I don't go on about aeration and drainage. It is the most crucial for your root health. Roots love oxygen, so if there's no aeration coming through to the roots, you will end up with poor root health, potentially root rot, and if there's no roots, there's not gonna be any plant. Because it has such great aeration and drainage, I have started using it in my pots. And in the pot, I really just mix it with some perlite and a little bit of bark. And I also use it in my poles where I use it basically just with a little bit of perlite, maybe a little bit of bark in it as well. I don't really differentiate between the mix in the pot and the pole. But if anything, I would make the mix in the pot a little chunkier, so add a little more bark because it has less surface area. So it would dry out a little less quickly. Now, the other pros, let me just show you the proof. Right? Let me just, the proof is in the pudding, so let's not talk about it in theory. Let me show you. So over here, and I hope it's okay with the glare. Yep, over here, this is a philodendron vernery. And I'm just putting it up on this moss pole because I want to propagate it. So over here, you can see that after just maybe five or six weeks being on this moss pole, there's plenty of roots visible. It's not a moss pole, it's a tree fern fiber pole. There's plenty of roots visible on the back of the pole over here. So that enabled me to cut between every single node over here. So now I have a bunch of plants on here that all have their own root system and they will all grow new shoots. This philodendron Choronii has also been in tree fern fiber, just mixed with a bit of perlite. And you can also see a bunch of roots on the back of the pot over there. Uh, yeah. And I also started using it to germinate. These are some alocasia seeds. And I just put tree fern fiber with perlite in here, popped the seeds on here, put them in my IKEA cabinet, and you can see that these have already grown little roots down to the bottom of it. So it's a very versatile medium that can be used from germinating to potting mix to the mix within your pole. I also started putting my queen on through and tree fern fiber in the pot as well as the pole. Um, so I'm starting to add more and more plants into tree fern fiber or like a, an aeroid mix that is very tree fern fiber heavy. Um, just to, of course, experiment a little further. But at this stage, I'm having really, really good results with tree fern fiber. Now, the other pro compared to a moss pole is that if I am to take this moss pole apart because of this flakiness of the tree fern fiber and the fact that it will never really compact, that substrate is just going to fall off and I have my root, new root system that I can go ahead and pot up. If you compare that to moss, where I spend a long time just freeing the moss from the roots and then breaking a lot of roots in the process. That is definitely a huge advantage that first of all makes my life much easier when it comes to repotting, but second of all, it also reduces any shock to the roots at, as part of the propagation process. So really, really happy with that. And that's why I'm probably gonna propagate most of my plants in tree fern fiber now and not in moss. But once they start going on their big moss poles, their big forever moss poles, I'm probably most likely still going to use moss just because it is a much cleaner option. It is a more cost effective option. And yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of used to it. <laughs> but we'll see how I go, you know, just one step at a time. Whenever I do these new things or whenever I try something new, I don't want to take my entire collection and flip it all into tree fern fiber. I'm going to do it slowly and like you know, see how I go and really assess it. So I reckon maybe in spring, I'll take a bunch of my plants outside and pop them in tree fern fiber instead, because it should be much easier to water it as well. With moss, especially if it dries out completely, it gets hydrophobic. Hydrophobic means that the water is just gonna pearl off. So you need to really slowly water the moss or mist the moss first. And only once it's like slightly moist, then you can start watering it properly to unlock all of the water retaining capacity. That's not the case with tree fern fiber. It just absorbs the water much easier and doesn't get as hydrophobic when you let it dry out completely. So inside with my moss poles, I just don't let them dry out completely. So they never get hydrophobic in the first place. But outside with increased airflow, 
it's really hard to not get your moss to go hydrophobic. So I reckon in spring, I will switch out those plants outside to tree fern fiber, but maybe just one at a time, see how I go, but I'll definitely share that with you. So what's the bottom line? Is it a game changer or is it overhyped? I personally really, really like it. I wouldn't necessarily call it a game changer because it's not changing the game. It might just be optimizing the game a little bit. It's not like tree fern fiber is gonna do some magical stuff to your plants that you can't achieve otherwise. I mean, I'm surrounded by really beautiful plants and I haven't used tree fern fiber to grow any of these plants. So quite clearly it's not a necessity, but if you're willing to spend the money on it and if you can source it in the first place, then it is definitely a great substrate to start using, specifically for plants that like a little bit more water retention, specifically for plants that you're trying to propagate, or maybe for plants that are really special to you, like the queen is for me. I'll link the Fernwood website down below so you can look it up, see whereabouts in the world they have retailers, but also learn a little bit more about their harvesting practices. I'll also link Grow Vertical and Growing Grounds down below. So if you're in Australia and you want to give it a try, hit up one of those too. And I'll also link a video of my potting mix in general because I started incorporating tree fern fiber in a few of my potting mixes, but not all of them have tree fern fiber in it. So if you can't or you don't want to try tree fern fiber now, there's heaps of other ways you can construct an aeroid mix to grow your plants successfully within an indoor setting. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it clarified what tree fern fiber is and what I like to use it for. And I hope you enjoyed the pudding that I was cooking over the last couple of weeks to show you what I like to use it for. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe and leave a nice comment and I will see you next time. Bye.